next park you're walking in, let's really start thinking about the design of these underground burrows. <laughs> One day, you might just be sitting underneath the burrows. Right. So how can we build these underground habitats and cities for squirrels and chipmunks? So here's some key challenges and motivations. Squirrels and other hibernators lose to 25% of their brain and spine mass in the winter. They largely lack physiological needs such as warmth, security, food, and water. And there's also this lack of language interaction and limited lifespan with uh, both squirrels and chipmunks. And so really trying to conceptualize how these so-called burrows or underground habitats could help overcome these physiological needs. Uh, we know that chipmunks, they burrow holes in tunnels two inches in diameter, three feet deep, digging tunnels parallel to the ground, um, outlined here in the diagram. And, and so uh, we've, we humans, we've done a lot here toward underground excavation and you know, all sorts of types of excavators and machines and we've, we've designed digging hole augers and these tunnel boring machines. Um, and then also there, um, we have all sorts of tools that humans and also animals could one day use to build these underground cities and um, also accelerate the, the, the uh, relationships between these species. Um, and, and, and so with the imaging and design uh, subsurface radar imaging could identify optimal surface and subsurface locations for entrances, exits, and more. Uh, you know, with the, these three D maps and, and GIS, we can uh, use these tools and software to identify uh, the optimal drainage tunnels, the uh, pipes, and and electricity, and and more. Uh, And so really coming into the borough locations and design, we know, you know, if, if we're underneath a park um, or, or forest, uh, we'll, we'll want sites of less tree roots. And uh, these, these satellites up, up in orbit can, and, and other remote sensing methods can help identify these optimal locations, again, with both radar and optical. And so if we also, if we were to have the GPS coordinates of animals, we could do this kind of path analysis and help determine the optimal, uh, you know, entry, exit, and uh, burrow locations. Um, and with the design, there's all sorts of logistics going on. I mean, we've got, you know, organics, we've got food, we've got water, we've got waste, we have all these other items that would be like, you know, transported through this uh, underground network. And, and, you know, we could uh, um, also want to encourage finger and hand utilization, you know, with, with potentially with ladders, cabinets, and other, uh, you know, other things. Uh, and, and, yeah, you know, Maybe we throw on some low cost stove tops and, uh, and over the time they can learn to cook. And then also, uh, there's also a time to learn and also we can help collect all sorts of data to help improve the, the design and, um, and their health. And, and also, you know, potentially uh, these, uh, you know, viewing tourist areas, which uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, you know, I, I'm kind of like, it'd be kind of cool to, uh, you know, stay with them and, and live in these burrows for a little while. And uh, so this would help create this, this market and help support their budget to, to build these um, a shelter. And, and, uh,
And so coming into the construction, the roofs, the foundation, uh, and, and so, well, how do we really construct these underground burrows? Um, well, we can, you know, uh, bring foundations and, and these um, all sorts of materials and, and concrete to help um, insulate and, and create shelter and, and keep the water out with no drainage tubing. And, uh, some tips to keep water out of foundation include installing drainage tubing below the basement floor, waterproof, waterproofing walls with coatings and, and gutters and extended downspouts here that have been outlined in this diagram. And then also six uh, milliliters of uh, this polyester material, uh, I believe, uh, for the sloping and um, you can also seal foundation cracks and install window well covers and, and uh, landscaping. And so more on improving the foundation and the water interface with various soils. Um, we know that soil is an effective insulator and that uh, in our value, uh, which was this is essentially how well insulated an environment is um, and, and material of only 0.25 to 1 per inch at 20% moisture constant. The content is the R value for soil. And uh, so it measures the resistance to heat flow and uh, an R value of two feet of soil outside of building wall provides uh, a, an, an efficient amount of um, uh, thermal protection uh, with with 24 inches of dirt. And, and so here we've outlined some of the types of soil and the temperature gradient across the various depths up to uh, 15 uh, meters in the winter and summer um, and the thermal conductivity of uh, fine sandy and, and coarse and, and medium sand with um, a diagram here for uh, to help maintain the soil pressure uh, gradient on foundation walls. And so here we've outlined more on the, the you know, this apartment and ecosystem and, and some uh, space occupancy estimates. We, we think it makes a good amount of sense that um, to have such burrows underneath parks, uh, which average around a half an acre to five acres, and uh, and so here's some uh, estimates for that humans require for space. And, and so if we translate that to chipmunks and squirrels, uh, this might be equivalent to a floor area of 4.6 meters squared or uh, 11 cubic meters. And, and so you know, anywhere from four to you know, 10 or so cubic meters per family. And, and uh, the human to ceiling ratio is 60 to 65%, but we should anticipate, I would say, uh, two to five X growth it, uh, for these uh, squirrels and chipmunks. And also consider that squirrels hot. So we'd want to increase the ceiling a bit. Uh, and then also keep a well-ventilated uh, home and environment uh, to uh, circulate CO2 and pull fresh air from above. And so some questions here, like, you know, what are the effects of thermally insulated shelter on animal uh, evolution, growth, and intelligence? And then with this emerging underground tourism market, which country or city develops highly intelligent squirrels and chipmunks first? And so it'd be kind of cool to, you know, go and uh, explore this underground burrow and, uh, and homes. And so with the growth in the wildlife tourism market over here, there's a, a currently a $3 billion market size uh, for zoos in the U.S. here in the 2020s. So since these underground burrows closer to cities and urban areas, this reduces the time and, and uh, 
the costs associated with uh, transportation, building infrastructure, and um, and 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 more, because um, we're closer to uh, the the source and, and and supply, and and so the significance here, you, you know, uh, if the if their limited lifespan is due to cold temperatures in the winter, these uh, thermally insulated environments could help maintain warm temperature gradients with minimal costs, and you know, potentially extend their lifespans by dozens of years. And create this like really uh, epic uh, symbiosis here on Earth and beyond. So thanks for your time, and uh, catch you next time.